hey welcome back my peeps so while we i was thinking while we in between holidays i know valentine's is coming up um you know i, I like to do um little tutorials to help like newbies that don't know how to do certain things i'll take a video and i'll just focus on that so this video i'm gonna focus on two things i'm gonna make um the drip the chocolate drip which it doesn't have to be chocolate it could be any color you want it to be and i'm also gonna show how to fill a piping bag i get those questions the most throughout this whole year that was the two questions that just kept popping up how do you make the drip how do you um fill a piping bag you know without your tip coming out I don't know how to do it properly, whatever. So in this video, I'm going to do both of those things. So let's get to it. So to make your drip, you are going to need these three things. Okay. You're going to need Mod Podge. You're going to need paint. I got burnt umber to give it a chocolate look. But if you don't, if you want to make strawberry syrup, you use pink paint. If you want to use a red drip, you make you use red. Whatever color you want your drip to be, that's the color paint that you use, okay? And um, you're going to need some caulk. I got this caulk from Dollar Tree, but you can use any caulk. You know, if you get caulk from the hardware store, Lowe's, whatever. This caulk is from Dollar Tree. So when I make my uh, drip, I usually put it in one of these containers you know something that seals tight because if you don't use it all you can save it and use it later at a later time or whenever you need it so you're gonna take and this is like my cork i got this this is not the tip that comes with this cork i got this from the hardware store and it's actually used for sealing these types of things you know because the um this comes with a tip but the other types of cork that you find in the big tube that you push through a gun, those don't come with tips. So that's why they sell these. And I bought me a couple of these because it's great to cover up my whole, my um, tip. But another thing that I do is I cover it up with a piece of tape at the tip part. I take a piece of tape and I just put it on like that and just wrap it like that, twist it up. And then I put my cap on. You can do the same thing with the cap that comes with this. Put a piece of tape and put the cap that came with this back on, okay? Because sometimes this tip, if you don't cover it up, it gets dry. And then you're going to have to get a toothpick or something and clean the tip out. And I, I don't be having time for that. Or You know what I'm saying? Be dealing with that every time I use cork. So anyways, you take some of your cork. Now... There is no precise measurement. You're just going to put cork, however much cork you think you're going to need. That's how much you're going to put in there, okay? You want to make sure you get enough, you make enough drip, because then you're going to have to make some more. And then usually when you have to make more, you might not get the color right. So make sure that you... Add enough caulk and stuff that you think you're going to need for your drip. So this, this color is burnt umber. I'm going to put some of the color in there. Oh gosh, look at this mess I made. That's way too much paint, but it looked like it has a clog, it had a clog in it. But it doesn't matter because if you feel like you made it too loose, you could always add more paint. Like I said, there's no precise measurement. Hold on a second. Because I, I need to wipe this up. Because if I don't, I'm going to get paint on everything. And I really don't. Once I get it on my hands, I'll get it on everything. So, now what you're going to do is you're going to take your mixture and you're just going to mix it up real well. Okay? You might find some lumps in it. This is nasty. See, this is this is what I'm talking about. When you deal with Mod Podge and when you deal with paint, sometimes you get like these. I call them boogers. Paint boogers, glue boogers. 
I don't mean to sound nasty like that, but that's, like, look, you see this? That's just a big old chunk of paint or Mod Podge. I don't know which one it was. Paint or Mod Podge, either one. Take it out, because if you put that, if you try to squeeze that out through your bag, it's just going to clog up. Mod Podge has a tendency to get like that. I don't know why, I guess... I mean, if it's around long enough, it starts, like, setting. So, it gets, like, thick, stringy and stuff. So, now, what you can do is you can let this set overnight. Because I don't know if you can tell that it puffed up. Like, it got really thick. I mean, it's not thick. It puffed up. It just increased in volume. But it didn't, it didn't get thick. Okay? So, you can let this sit overnight. And then stir it again, and it should be nice and thin like this. See, I have a couple of them that I already, I used this one before, and I just saved it. So, I never know if I might need some green. But let's look at it. Let me get a stir stick. See, it's still, you can still work with it. It's still runny. And if it's too thick, you feel like it's not runny enough, just add a little bit of Mod Podge to it. And it'll, it'll get nice and runny again. See? Now it's runny. I don't know if you can see that that good. It's light. Let's see, can you see that? Still can't see it that good. But it gets runny. If it gets thick, just add a little bit of Mod Podge. Okay? I had this. I don't even know what I remember. <laughs> I don't even remember what I used this green for. But I know I had it for a while. Just keep it nice and sealed. And try not to keep gunk on the edges. Because you want a nice seal when you cut when you close it you want to have a nice seal oh oh lord you know i gotta give y'all the bloopers you want it to have a nice seal so that it stays you know so you can still use it it's workable now i put the wrong lid on the container oh my god look i got the lid over here huh. all right Good job, son. Good job. Let me get a wet wipe. So busy talking and trying to get these lights to work. I don't. Lighting is the, like the worst part of this whole thing. Well, here's a couple of things. <laughs> As a content creator, let me tell you, things be happening. Okay. All right. So this is our drip, and. Uh, it's still thick in volume, but I'm still going to use it. Like I said, let it set overnight. And when you let it set overnight and you stir it, it's going to get thinned out, okay? So, now we're going to get our cupcake. Because you guys want me to show you how to do the drip. So, I have... A cupcake here that I an extra cupcake that I had but I'm gonna show you all how to do this cupcake but in a, another video it's actually just a foam cupcake and this wrapper is from Dollar Tree but we'll do that on another on another video so I got my <clears throat> I got my spackle here let's move some things around over here Got my spackle here, and I'm going to just give it a good, I'm going to just whip it real good. Sometimes you don't even really have to add uh, anything to your spackle. Just give it a good whip. And if it's, if it, uh, 
you know, if it's smooth and nice, you don't maybe need to add water. But I'm going to add a sprinkle of water. If you do need to add water, I always keep a spray bottle over here so I can spray. I don't like adding direct water, like spoonfuls or a cup or because you might add too much. A spray bottle, it just adds a little bit. Like a mist. It doesn't add like volume really. So I think that's good. So now I'm going to get a cup. I got this cup from Wendy's. I always keep these cups because I use it for resin. Or if I want to mix something in it, I could just throw it out. And you're going to get your, um, you're going to get your piping bag. I got these. These are really cheap ones. These are not Wilton or anything like that. I got these for when I do small uh, volume um, spackling. So I got my container with my tips here. Y'all remember this container? I did this like two years ago. But we going to make some of these too. But anyways. So I'm going to use tip. What's this? This is a 1M tip. Star tip. You're going to use that. So now, no matter what bag you use, this is how I was taught. I took a Wilton course years ago. And this is how I was taught to do my piping bags, and it works perfectly. Let's move this over here for a minute. You take your tip. You're going to put it in your bag. Now, you're going to, you see how the tip is right there you're gonna take your scissor now you don't want to cut too high because sometimes when you put pressure on the bag because of the spackle or icing if you're baking a cake or whatever if you make the big the um the cut too wide or too big when you put pressure on your bag the tip could just pop out we don't want that so we want to make I'll cut as minimal as possible just enough to get the tip sticking out so I take my scissor and I kind of mark like mark where I wanted to cut right and I push it back a little bit and I go to the mark that I made and I cut right there and now I push my tip out and look see even though I didn't cut that far down when you push your tip through it still pushes a little on its own okay that's why you can't make the cut too big okay and if you don't feel safe about this I don't I really don't do this but if you don't feel safe about your tip you can just take some tape and tape it around like if you don't want it to come off you want to be sure that your tip is not gonna come off and you want to be safe about it tape it down I mean, you know, you do what makes you comfortable. I don't do that, but other people do. And it's perfectly fine. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. Then I take my piping bag and I put it in here. Now you want to make sure your fold comes down a little bit. Because you don't want to fill your bag up all the way to the top and you can't grab it. And when you squeeze it, your... Um, Spackle is going to come out from the top. You don't want that, okay? Then you take your spackle and you just put it in the bag. Okay, I have a whole video on spackle, like how to get it to the right consistency or what happens when it dries out and all that good stuff. Okay, so then you take that. Make sure you cover your tobacco back up. Now you take it out of the cup. And <clears throat> I just, so you don't want to make sure that you don't get it all the way to the top. You want to have room. So, I, what I do, make sure that your seams are on opposite sides. You want your seams to be on opposite sides. I just push it down like that, but some people take it. Lay it down and do this. Whatever makes you comfortable, okay? 
crafting is about how you make your things work for you, okay? You don't have to do it like everybody else does. Because you know what? There's 10 different ways to do one thing. And what works for you, works for you. What works for somebody else, it works for them. I just usually take some and squeeze it out, make sure the tip is working good. Then I keep a wet wipe. And I kind of wipe the tip off again. Then I take my cupcake. Let's go this way for a minute. So I take my cupcake and I just swirl it on top like that. We've done swirls plenty of times, okay? Right? So that's my swirl. And then I'm going to put my drip on there now. Now your tip with all this spackle in it, you want to empty it out. If you're not going to use it, empty it out. I mean, some people save it with this inside and the tip. But if you leave it in there for too long, your tip is going to get clogged. And it's not going to be good. So, I... I just, I'm not going to use it anymore after this. So I'm just going to put it back in my container and save it for another time. Because there's no point in wasting good spackle. No, ma'am. Now your tip, I just take, like, some people save the bags. I'm not going to save my bag. What I do is I take like a exacto knife and I just cut it like that and it comes off and then you can wash your tip. I put it in like water. I forgot I have tape on here <laughs> just because I'm not used to doing that. But I just take my tip and get a cup of water, let it soak in there and get most of it out and then you can wipe it with a wet wipe. And that's good. Now, you don't want to be washing all your stuff in the sink and all that because it can clog up your sink, okay? And, honey, we want to craft and not cause any drama in our lives. So, don't clog up your, <laughs> your sink. So, now, I'm just going to use these little, I got these sandwich bags from Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use that to put my drip in here. I'm going to get a little, you know what, I'm going to use this right here. Put it to the side like that. Now, when you put your drip in here, in the little bag, you want to make sure you get a corner. All right, this is your sandwich bag, right? You want to make sure that you get a corner. So what I do, I take my sandwich bag and I put the corner like this just straight down in the middle because I want my drip to go in the corner I don't want to push it to the side or anything because sometimes it's like it gets wasted so I'm about to put this drip in here now make sure you wipe because you don't want to save this leftover drip now you put as much drip as you think is going to be needed for your project i'm just using a little bit because i'm just showing you guys how to do the drip so you put it in your little baggie right i like to cut this part off i just think it's too much in my way now this is very important very important. I like to put my stuff on here in case some of the drip comes to the side. So now, when you cut this bag with the drip in it, you want to come to the tip and just kind of push it down a little bit so that you don't really have a lot of stuff at the top. I don't know if you can see that. I pushed it down a little bit. So you can see the tip. You want to cut the tiniest, I'm talking about the tiniest hole you can cut at the top. You see how I push the, uh, wait, 
let me get this right. You see how I pushed the um the uh what the heck? I lost some somebody just trying to call me and I just start thinking about it. Um drip. Now you want to take your scissor and you are going to cut. I'm talking about the tiniest hole from the top. Like it's so tiny, you can't hardly even tell. Look, I don't know if you can see this, but it's very tiny, the hole I cut. You see that? The tip is right there. That's how tiny I cut it. Now, if you want a big drip, you can cut the hole bigger. But the only reason why I tell you to cut it small like this, because this is very liquidy. It's very loose. And if you want to have control over it, you got to cut a tiny hole. Because if you cut it too big, you're not be able to control it. And you're not going to be able to let the um, the uh, liquid go where you want it to go. So this is what I do. And there go your drip. Okay? That way you can put your drip wherever you want it to go. Okay? And that's how you make your drip. And that's how you do the drip. As you can see, it really did drip on my cupcake. But. Okay? So, that's that's your drip. So, if you have any leftover, just pour it right back into the container. Put your lid on. Remember, wipe it off. So you don't have any stuff at the top. You're going to wipe it off. Make sure you don't have anything at the top. And you put the lid on. And you save it for your next project. Okay? So if you wanted to, you could add some... A little bit of diamond dust on there or you can add your sprinkles I don't have any sprinkles with me right now because I didn't bring any but that's how you do your drift that's how you fill your piping bag and now you're ready to go on and make you some cupcakes so guys I hope you enjoyed this quick little tutorial on how to make drip and how to use a fill a piping bag. Let me know what you think. All right, guys. So until the next video, stay safe, stay healthy, keep crafting, and I will talk to you guys very soon. Take care. God bless.